Corporations are clearly immensely powerful. They're some of the largest economic entities in the world. Uh, and so what they do really matters. They have a huge impact around the world in all the countries of the world sometimes. One of the key reasons why people are so fed up with politics in this country is because of this cosy club at the top, this impression that there is an elite gang operating behind closed doors that are making decisions in their own interests. Well, business leaders have a, a range of stakeholders, a range of audiences, uh, their investors being only one of them. So responsible businesses don't just think about their own bottom line and their own results and, and dividends and so on and their share price, although they're only human, they're ambitious, and so inevitably they worry primarily about their own self-interests. Westminster and Whiteham Hall are, um, are basically surrounded by corporate lobbyists and their job is to influence the decisions of government. We need to recognize that the entire tax system is broken. The rules are rigged against the public interest. Lobbying has become another way of making money. It is a tactical investment that is made by corporations um, as a way of um, making sure that they retain the profits that they want. What I do think the failure to make corporations pay tax tells us more about is really the elite capture of the rules and the way they're written, uh, the international tax rules are written. And I think a really good example of that is we see this sort of revolving door between policymakers and the private sector. So those who write the rules are also those who profit from advising companies on the rules. You will get lobbyists from, for example, the British Bankers Association, when they were accused um, during the crisis of very, very aggressive lobbying um, of government, and they turned around and they said, but no, 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 charities and trade unions, they lobby as well, and we have a right to lobby government. Well, yes, they do have a right to lobby government, but the impression that they give is an equal and equivalent lobby in the trade unions and the charities and the like. There is no equal and equivalent lobby to the city. Well, we're in an interesting situation now because I think we have uh, real bubbles developing um, where boardrooms and businesses are somehow disconnected with the rest of society and we need to find ways to include these wider stakeholders in a business and pay attention to what they think. So companies worry a bit about PR and social media and things suddenly exploding and being out of control. Whether they really have to change how they behave longer term is a, is a completely different question. That's where you get into regulation and, and relationships with governments again. The rules are rigged against the public interest and I think there's companies that will never have a public facing uh, brand and those companies will never be the target of a social media campaign for example. So we want to see the public mobilizing in this way, um, naming and shaming brands and focusing on companies is one way to do that. But we also want to see citizens engaging in a sustained way in the democratic process looking at the way that the policies need to change to affect the underlying rules and not just the behavior of a few really well-known companies.